In the last video, we talked about Blueprint Engine's LS four cylinder, which is a 3.6 liter. This video, we're gonna talk about all the specs and details that we know about it. And I'm gonna to try to answer some of the questions that I got in the comments. There was a lot of them. So I'm gonna to try to cover everything that I can based on the information that we have. Now, I wanna start by clarifying one thing that came up multiple times in the comments. I didn't physically mention this in the last video, but I did put up a screenshot of it. The horsepower and torque numbers that were advertised, 340 horsepower, 500 plus pound feet of torque was with a turbocharger setup. Now, I really wish I knew what size turbo they used and how much PSI they were pushing. None of that was disclosed, so I don't know any of that information. All I do know is it was turbocharged. Naturally aspirated numbers have not been talked about yet, so we don't know what they are, what they could possibly be, although I am very curious to that myself. If I do find out or when I find out, I will let you know, um, but again, Definitely a turbocharged engine. Now the next question slash comment that I want to address is where the cam goes. Because a lot of people were mentioning it can't be an overhead cam engine with an LS head. Obviously not. Uh, the cam is actually in the block. The whole engine is based on an old three liter platform, which is used a lot in marine applications and industrial applications. So this is a very old school primitive push rod engine. Now the cam goes in the block, it's behind this giant cam gear here that I have a picture of, and the push rods you can see going up along the side of the block, and through the head, and then to the rocker arms. So it's a very old school setup, and not very technologically advanced, but if built right, I'm assuming this is going to handle a lot of boost. And that's what we're going to talk about next, because it sounds like Blueprint Engines had mentioned them really reworking this engine for performance applications. So I would initially think that means lots of boost, therefore lots of power. So let's jump right into the specs of this engine. And the article states that the specs are as followed. It has a 4.125 inch bore with a max bore of 4.185. The deck height is 9.145 inches with a 4.05 inch stroke. Now that should answer a lot of the comments I got already in the previous video. A lot of people were asking about the bore size and the stroke and everything in the engine. So hopefully this helps you out. Going down the list a little farther on the specs says coil near plug ready, comes with a cam sensor, crank sensor, could also run a distributor. Kind of figured it would considering it's an old school push rod setup. Continues saying additional capacity water jacket, high capacity water pump capable of 38 plus gallons per minute, 5.7 4340 connecting rods with tapered pin end. Now it also comes with a 351 Windsor main bearing, small block Chevy rod bearing, and small block Chevy cam bearing. So again, I mentioned in the other video, we got a hybrid of parts going in here from both Ford and Chevy. Some people had mentioned that they saw from the picture that it was only a two bolt main, and that is because they are using the 351 Windsor main bearings. And durability came into question from my personal experience anyway. I have seen a lot of 351s tolerate a lot of power and a lot of abuse. Therefore, that's why they only really needed the two bolt. They were built pretty strong. I know Chevy uses the four bolt and you know, it's kind of a love hate relationship between Ford and Chevy. Some people would go either way to me. If it works, it works. I don't care if it's got two or four bolts, as long as it holds it together, that's all that matters. Now the list continues saying the current crank is nodular iron, has a small block Chevy one piece RMS style flywheel flange, uses small block Chevy flywheels or flex plates and also uses a small block Chevy starter. Now I did get a question too of the bolt pattern for the flywheel and I don't have that, it's not listed on here, but it did say in the article that it would meet up with any basic GM flywheel. So I don't know what the pattern is, but if you are a GM or Chevy guy, maybe you know what the standard Chevy bolt pattern is for a flywheel. It says that it should meet up with just about any of them. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit. 
and hopefully some of these specs helped you out on a lot of the questions that I got down in my comments that I personally couldn't answer for you at the time. Now, the only thing else that was in here, I think I mentioned it in the other video, I can't remember at the current moment, that the performance variant of this engine will include an LS head. Uh, they also said there will be a variant that includes a Ford Windsor head. Now, I don't know what the application for that one would be, if it's going to be any different than the one with the LS head or the performance variant. Maybe that one would be for marine applications. I'm sure you could put it in anything else. I really do, and there's been a lot of comments about that. Again, people were talking about put it in S10s or Jeeps or anything else like that. Now, they did want to emphasize that this was built for strength, and because it is an iron long block, it does come in at about 300 pounds. Now, I think this is a cool engine with a lot of possibilities for applications and project vehicles or marine applications or whatever else you might want to put it in. But there's been a lot of comments about, all oh, it's not very impressive. It's an old school tractor engine and it's not a Honda K-Series that can, you know, rev out to 8,000 RPMs or higher. And no, it's not. It's really not meant to be that way. I think the important part of this engine is the torque and how much of it you're going to get down low and what you can do with that torque as far as moving a boat or a project car or a Jeep or something off-roading would be a great application for this. So if you're really looking for something like that, this engine might be up your alley. If you want a high revving race engine, the Honda K-Series is probably where you want to go. But I want to know what your thoughts are overall on this engine. When we get more details on it, like naturally aspirated horsepower numbers, I'm definitely going to report that. But overall, I think it's a cool engine. I want to know what your thoughts are. Drop a like on the video for me. Hit that subscribe button on your way out. I'm Kevin, and I'll see you in the next upload.